Hey there, welcome back to my kitchen. Today's video is a little bit longer than normal, but I wanted to take the time to show you what I realistically make for seven days of meals here in my kitchen. All these meals are relatively easy to make and decently budget friendly, so let's go ahead and get started and I will show you everything I made this past week. Starting today off, we're going to go ahead and make our favorite chicken and stuffing. This is a staple recipe in our house. It's one of my husband's favorite meals. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 degrees. And now in a 9 by 13 casserole dish, I'm just adding in two chicken breasts that I split down the center to make four. This is just going to help it cook a lot faster and not become dry in the oven. And then just keeping it really simple, I'm going to season this on both sides with a little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Now add that into your oven and this is going to bake for about 15 to 20 minutes until the chicken is cooked all the way through. While that's in the oven, we're going to get our chicken stuffing started. You'll need three boxes of this chicken stuffing and each box does call for a fourth cup of butter and one and a half cups of water. For the butter, I do not add a stick and a half of butter. I just add whatever I have in my butter container. On this day, I don't even think it was a whole stick of butter. It doesn't really make that big of a difference if I'm being honest. So I just add in a little bit and then I add in all the required water and let that come to a boil. Once it's boiling, you can go ahead and add your stuffing in, turn off the heat, and just let that sit for a second until your chicken is done cooking. When the chicken's done, I'm just going to go ahead and take two forks and shred all of that up. Once you've shredded the chicken, you're going to add half of your stuffing into the pan and then I like to take half of the chicken out and put it into the pan with the stuffing. This just makes it easier because I like to do this in layers. Get the chicken and stuffing mixed up that's in your 9x13 and then make it nice and even in the pan. Next, I'm just taking some shredded mild cheddar cheese. I'm gonna add probably a half cup in here. It doesn't have to be a lot. And now we're gonna go ahead and take the rest of the chicken and stuffing that I did mix up in this pan and add that on top. Once again, you're just going to kind of level that out, make sure everything is nice and even. And then over the top, you're gonna add a lot more of that mild cheddar cheese. On the top, you'll add approximately one and a half to two cups of cheese. And then this is going in the oven to bake for about 20-ish minutes. Everything is already cooked through, so you just wanna make sure it's nice and hot and that the cheese is completely melted. Here's what it should look like when it's all done in your bowl. This meal is definitely not a healthy meal. However, it is so comforting. We just love having this. The first time I ever had this, Somebody actually brought it over for my mom after she had one of my little brothers, and we have been making it in our family ever since. Next up, we're making some very easy baked taquitos. For this one, you will need to go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Next, into an 8x8 casserole dish, I'm just going to go ahead and add in two chicken breasts. For the chicken, you're going to keep it really simple. Just add some salt and pepper onto each side. This went into the oven and baked for about 20 to 25 minutes until the chicken was cooked all the way through. Once the chicken is cooked, you'll go ahead and just shred it all up and add it into a nice big bowl. With the chicken, you're also going to add one 8 ounce block of room temperature cream cheese. I added in just a little bit of frozen spinach that I had thawed out just to add in some extra veggies. This was probably about three tablespoons of frozen spinach. 
Next, add in one and a half cups of shredded cheese. I'm using a taco blend, but you can use Fiesta, Mexican blend, or Cheddar Jack. Half a cup of your favorite salsa, and half a cup of sour cream. Then you'll just add a couple shakes of salt and give this a good mix together. Once that is mixed, we're gonna go ahead and start filling our tortillas. So I know traditionally that taquitos are made with corn tortillas, but I am just not a very big fan of baked corn tortillas. I don't mind them if they're fried, but when they're baked, I just don't like the texture. So I'm using some flour tortillas, but you can use corn if you prefer. These are fajita sized tortillas. They're a little bit smaller than your traditional tortilla. For each one of these, I'm just going to add a line of this mixture and then roll them up nice and tight. I'm just adding these over to a lined baking sheet. I did line it with some parchment paper. Add all of the taquitos on there with the seam side down and spray them with some oil over the top. I stuck these in my oven for about 12 minutes. At the 12 minute mark, I went ahead and turned on my broiler. I left the broiler on for about a minute to two minutes, just long enough to really darken the tops of these and get them crunchy. Here's what my plate looked like in the end. I did just add some lettuce, tomato, more sour cream, and some hot sauce onto mine. And I did serve it along with some cheesy Mexican rice and some homemade refried beans. These taquitos turn out so good. They're very cheesy inside, very creamy from that cream cheese. Sometimes I make these and just serve them with a bunch of dipping sauces, but today I decided to go the refried bean and rice route. On this night, we decided to try a new recipe. This is called ranch chicken pasta. The original recipe link will be down below for you. I did not follow the recipe to a T. I almost never follow a recipe to a T, so I will let you know what I did differently. For this recipe, I was using one and a half chicken breasts. I did go ahead and cut the bigger one down the middle. To season it, I'm just adding some garlic powder, pepper, and some ranch seasoning. I did not measure these seasonings. I just kind of made sure they had enough on them and they were good to go. Coming over here to my skillet, I'm adding about a tablespoon of butter in there and a little bit of avocado oil. Once that's nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking up my chicken. These are just going to cook for about three to four minutes per side until they have this beautiful golden color on them. Once this chicken is fully cooked, I'm going to remove it out of the pan. In the same pan, we're going to go ahead and add in about two teaspoons of minced garlic. I'm just going to stir this around, kind of scraping the bottom, and let this cook for about 30 seconds to a minute on its own. Then you'll add in one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. I'm going to mix this flour in, let it absorb all the juices from the chicken, and then just let it cook for about a minute or so. Then add in one cup of low sodium chicken broth. I'm going to get this mixed up, scraping the bottom again, just to make sure I get all the flavor off my pan and kind of let this thicken up for a few. Now this recipe does call for you to add in fresh tomatoes. However, my husband does not like when I add fresh tomatoes into a recipe, but he does not mind if I use canned tomatoes. So I went ahead and just added in a can of tomatoes with the juices. And I'm also adding about a tablespoon and a half of ranch seasoning mix. This is more than the recipe called for, but some of the comments did say it wasn't ranchy enough, so I went ahead and just added a little extra. This recipe does call for two cups of fresh baby spinach. I do not have that. I always have frozen spinach in my freezer though, so I went ahead and just added the remaining of what was in the bag. It was about a fourth cup. My husband was in the kitchen with me and he thought it would be good if I added a little bit of half and half in here. So I did add a couple tablespoons, I'd say two to three. 
And I also did taste this and it did not seem very ranchy, so I added probably another teaspoon of ranch seasoning. Once my sauce was nice and hot, the spinach was no longer frozen, and it was looking a little thicker, I added in 12 ounces of cooked bow tie pasta. I adjusted my seasonings here, adding just a little bit more pepper and garlic powder. Finally, getting along here to the end, I'm gonna go ahead and add on my chicken. So as you can see, I did slice up the chicken just so it would be easier to eat. And then over the top, I'm adding some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Here's what it ended up looking like in the end. This actually was pretty good. However, it still didn't have very much of a ranch flavor. I thought it was good, my husband thought it was good, but next time I still think it needs more ranch seasoning in it. And then on the side there you can see I made some garlic bread out of some leftover hamburger buns and this was our dinner on this night. Next up, this was a wing it as you go kind of meal, but I ended up making this Italian shredded pork. Into my baby crock pot here, I'm adding about one fourth of a half pork loin. On top of the pork, I'm adding about a fourth teaspoon of pepper, a fourth teaspoon of salt, a fourth teaspoon of sage, and a fourth teaspoon of rosemary. Then you're going to add in one teaspoon of minced garlic, and then over the top, I'm gonna to add about one tablespoon of sliced butter. Then I added the lid on and let this cook on low for about six hours. Here's what it looked like when it was all done. As you can see, it shreds very easily at this point. So I'm just going to take my fork and shred it up right here in the crock pot. After shredding it, you're gonna add in two more tablespoons of butter. This butter is going to help the flavor, but also it'll help keep it from feeling too dry. Here's what my plate looked like in the end. I did decide to add some shredded mild cheddar cheese to mine. My husband added some mozzarella to his, and honestly, it was good both ways. To go along with this, I made some potato wedges and just sliced up a cucumber. This actually turned out really, really good, and I would definitely make it again. Now we're gonna make this creamy bacon and mushroom chicken. It's probably been about two years since I made this, so I thought we would go ahead and make it today. To begin, I have one package of boneless, skinless chicken thighs already trimmed up on my cutting board. I'm just gonna go ahead and season these on both sides with a little bit of garlic, salt, and pepper. I did not measure these seasonings, I just made sure that they were all seasoned nicely. Now moving over here to my skillet, I'm adding about one tablespoon of butter along with about a tablespoon of avocado oil. Once those are nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my chicken in here. This cooked for about three to four minutes per side and once it had gotten some nice color on it, I just went ahead and flipped them over. While the chicken was cooking, I did go ahead and slice up one eight ounce package of these brown mushrooms. 
As you can see, I do remove the stems. That's a texture thing. If you like them, you can go ahead and leave them in. Once my chicken thighs were hitting at least 165 degrees, I removed them out of a pan and added them over onto this plate. Once the pan is empty, you're gonna go ahead and add in about one third of a package of chopped bacon. And then you're also going to add the mushrooms and just let these two cook in here together. Once the bacon is fully cooked and the mushrooms have some good color to them, this did take about eight to 10 minutes. Drain off any excess grease and then you're gonna add in about two teaspoons of minced garlic. Give this a stir and let this cook for about 30 seconds to a minute until you can smell the garlic nice and strong. Next, you're gonna add in one cup of half and half along with a half cup of low sodium chicken broth. Now we're gonna get this mixed up really well. You wanna make sure you scrape the bottom of your pan a little bit to pick up all the flavor from the bacon and the chicken cooking in here. The color of your sauce should turn more to a tan color. That's good, that means you've got some flavor in your sauce. Once the sauce is hot, you can go ahead and add in some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. I'd say this was probably about a half a cup. Stir that cheese in and just let the cheese melt. Now you can go ahead and taste your sauce and see if you need to add any more salt and pepper. Honestly, you probably won't need salt because of that Parmesan cheese and the bacon, so I would skip the salt if you can and just add the pepper. Add your chicken back into the pan and get them covered in that sauce. I did go ahead and add a little parsley on the top just to finish it off, but this is what your plate should look like when it's all done. To go along with this, I just steamed up a little bit of broccoli florets and made some baked potatoes. This chicken recipe is so good. I believe I did follow this recipe once off of a actual recipe, so if I can still find it, I will link it down below for you. I actually copied this recipe off an older video of mine, but if I can find the recipe, I'll link it down below for you. But just a little tip, this sauce is actually really good on a baked potato. Now we're actually going to make something that I like to do when my cheese drawer gets a little bit too full and I have a bunch of random stuff. We're going to make what we like to call a grilled cheese buffet. And what I do for this is I take all the random cheeses I have and anything else in my fridge that'll be good on a grilled cheese. And that's what I use to make the grilled cheese sandwiches. On this night, I actually had made some homemade white bread. So I used my homemade bread with this. The easiest way to go about this is by using a griddle because you can cook a lot at one time. So to begin, I'm just taking one slice of buttered bread and adding that on there with one slice of Gouda cheese. I'm also adding some turkey pepperoni. And then on top of the pepperonis, I'm adding one slice of pepper jack cheese. Then I'm topping it with another piece of buttered bread. For the next one, I'm adding my bread and butter down. I'm adding one slice of Gouda cheese, some sliced tomatoes, and then one slice of cheddar cheese on top, finishing it with the buttered bread. For the third one, I'm adding the mild cheddar, one slice of Gouda cheese, and one slice of pepper jack cheese. I like to kind of spread them out, that way they melt down the side of the sandwich. Then add the top piece of bread. And then for the last one here, I'm adding two slices of Gouda with a piece of pepper jack in the center. But for this one, on one side of the bread, I'm adding butter, and the other side, I'm adding this chipotle sauce from Taco Bell. We are currently obsessed with this sauce, and let me tell you, this was the best sandwich out of all of them. About this time, you can go ahead and flip over all of your sandwiches as long as they have some good color to them. These really do not take long to make. You'll just cook them for a few minutes on each side until the cheese is nice and melty. Mm -hmm. 
Making a grilled cheese buffet is a great way to clean out your refrigerator. And also, honestly, who can go wrong with a grilled cheese sandwich? If you have kids, they will love this night. So for myself, I actually love grilled cheese with tomato on it. So I actually just ate that whole sandwich by myself with a little bit of potato wedges. And then to go along with this, I also made a salad. And then on Sunday of this week, I made some enchilada casserole. You will need to go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. To begin with this one, you'll need to add one pound of ground beef along with half of a yellow onion that you chop up into your skillet. After the ground beef is done cooking, you will remove any grease from the pan. Then you'll add one teaspoon of chili powder with a half teaspoon of cumin. You'll also be needing a four ounce can of drained green chilies. Next, add in one 15 ounce can of drained and rinsed pinto beans. And then you're just going to get this all mixed together. Next, into a medium sized bowl, you're gonna add in one cup of sour cream. Into the sour cream, this may seem weird, but it does work out in the end. You're gonna add in two tablespoons of flour and a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. Mix this up really well until the garlic and the flour is absorbed into the sour cream. For this recipe, you'll need a nine by 13 casserole dish, or you can use something similar like what I have here. Be sure to spray the pan down with some nonstick spray, and then you're going to add some tortillas into the bottom. Just try to cover as much of the bottom as you can. Next, add in half of the ground beef and bean mixture. Once that is even in the pan, you'll go ahead and add half of your sour cream. The sour cream will be a little harder to spread around, just do the best you can. Then we're going to sprinkle on just a little bit of some cheese. I believe I was using either Fiesta blend cheese or taco cheese. Either one will work fine. And then I'm going to pour in one whole can of red enchilada sauce. At this point, you're pretty much just going to repeat everything you just did. So here, we're just going to add the other layer of tortillas. Next, add the rest of your ground beef and bean mixture, the sour cream, a sprinkle of cheese, one more can of red enchilada sauce. Then over the top, you're gonna add the rest of your cheese. It looks like I was indeed using the taco blend here. I'd say I added close to a cup on top. And then this is going in your oven to bake for about 35 minutes until everything is nice and hot and the cheese is melted. Here's what my bowl looked like in the end. I did just add some sour cream on top there. I love recipes like this that have tortillas in them. I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but I kind of like the sogginess. They're not super soggy, but they are definitely softer. This is also a recipe where you can use corn tortillas instead of flour tortillas, but like I said earlier, I prefer to use the flour tortillas. The flavor in this was really, really good, and it is super filling. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did make it all the way to the end of today's long video, please leave me a flower down below so that I can see that you did. I will see you guys back here on Sunday for a new video. Bye.